for the Susan Taylor Podcast, where we discuss the yoga of mind, medicine, and healing. Author of Feeling Good Matters, Sexual Radiance, and the Vital Energy Program, Dr. Taylor imparts authentic knowledge and practical tools that inspire, educate, and empower us to be a healing force for positive change. So join us and take your life and our planet to the next level. Hello and welcome to Episode 25, Seven Skills to Build Resilience. Resilience is a mindset, and it refers to how well you can deal with and bounce back from the difficulties of life. It can mean the difference between remaining calm, consciously aware, living in the moment, and also remaining calm under a perceived stressful circumstance, or losing your cool to a point of becoming out of balance. Resilient people tend to maintain a more positive outlook and cope with stress more effectively. So whether you're going through a tough time now or want to be prepared for the next one, resilience is something that we want to cultivate. Today, I'd like to talk about the seven skills that I've used to help students and clients build resilience. In other words, live in the world without having the world consume your health and well-being. Let's get started. The first skill that I found was to remain calm, consciously aware, living in the moment. In other words, know yourself. Who are you? In our last blog on the future of well-being, also the podcast, it was suggested to ask yourself, who am I? When we're aware of who we are and why we're here, we develop the confidence from the inner knowledge of knowing that. This builds our view of ourself and, as a result, confidence builds. Research has demonstrated that our self-esteem plays an important role in coping with stress and recovering from difficult events. Self-esteem is how we view ourselves. Do we view ourselves as a confident person with skills? Or do we have a self-dialogue that goes on where we doubt ourselves? Becoming more aware of yourself includes your ability to respond and deal with the perceived stressful event. So that's all part of that. That's a great way to build resilience for the present and for the future. So by becoming aware, which we do training in that, how do we become aware of ourselves? That also includes our ability to respond to and deal with any perceived stressful event. And that will help build resilience. The second skill I came up with and what we've used is to use your body as feedback. We all know that our body and mind are one. So whatever reflects in our mind goes back into the body and reflects as such. So when we have a pain in our lower back, for example, what's really going on in our mind is our mind in an unrestful position. Research has shown that while some people seem to come by resilience naturally, these behaviors can also be learned. But what research has not revealed is that the mind and body are one. So if you work with the body, the mind can become resilient. It's much more difficult to have a resilient mind if the body is struggling with pain and discomfort due to sickness or even eating poorly. Working with the body by providing a systematic lifestyle of habits that are very useful for well-being is the gold standard. In other words, how, when, and what you eat, what you do for exercise, and prepare for rest and sleep in the evening produces significant outcomes on our resilience factor. The third skill is accepting what is. In other words, embracing change. With optimism, I must say, flexibility is an essential part of resilience. By learning how to be more adaptable, you'll be better equipped to respond when faced with a life crisis. Resilient people often utilize these events as an opportunity to branch out into new directions. While some people may be crushed by abrupt changes that happens, highly resilient individuals are able to adapt and thrive. 
Staying optimistic during dark periods or what we perceive as dark periods can be difficult, but maintaining a hopeful outlook is an important part of our resiliency. Positive thinking doesn't mean ignoring a problem in order to focus on positive outcomes, but it just means to acknowledge that there is a problem, but maintain optimistic thinking, positive thinking. It means to understand that setbacks are temporary and that you have the confidence in your skills and abilities to combat the challenges that you face. What you are dealing with may be difficult, it has to be, you know, sometimes these things do happen, but it's important to remain hopeful or trustful, I should say, and positive about having a brighter future. The fourth skill, so we we talked about remain calm, consciously aware, living in the moment, use your body as feedback, accepting what is. The next skill is to nourish yourself. I always say, nourish your body, balance your mind. To build resilience requires a well-nourished mind-body complex. This is especially needed because when you find yourself in a difficult situation, your mind will send a signal to your body to use resources to protect yourself. It'll want to protect itself. That's our stress response. However, remember when I talk about meditation, I always say as we work with meditation, our frontal cortex will come online and the limbic system, which is the protect ourself, will actually go offline. So we're able to look at a situation and we can reserve our um, our hormones, we can reserve our stability and our homeostatic mechanisms. They become maintained when we're able to look at a situation, but only that can happen if we have a nourished body and a balanced mind. Our nourished body mind complex does not perceive a threat as often as someone who doesn't have the strength and stamina to withstand the tumultuous environment that we're so ingrained in in today's culture. Focus on building your self-nurturing skills, even when you're troubled, is very, very, a very good skill to have. Make time for life, meaning the activities that you enjoy, relationships, and I don't mean a relationship with social media, by the way, and I'll get to that in a minute. By nourishing your own needs, you can boost your overall health and resilience and be fully ready to face life's challenges. And you'll be more able in the turn to serve others. And we all know that happiness is really about doing for others. The next skill is build positive social relationships. And what I mean by that is social network, not social media. It's important to distinguish between building a social relationship and social media accounts. A human being operates within the relationship he or she has with themselves, which in turn extends out to other life forms. Expressing our feelings with other human beings is far superior than posting our feelings on our favorite social media channel. In fact, social media will support the breakdown of the human interaction and in turn will decrease the mind's resilience factor. And I'll say that again. Social media will support the breakdown of a human interaction and in turn will decrease the mind's resilience factor. Take time to cultivate a relationship with life and not a machine. It will be worth your time. The next skill we have, skill number six, is find your, pers- find your purpose in life and set your intention. And when we find our purpose in life and know who we are, why are we here? We set our intention. And when we set our intention, no matter what comes our way, we're able to handle it because we know which direction we're going in. We set our intention and say, for example, I am going to serve in this position today. And what happens is anything that comes in your way, because there's always obstacles that will appear, you still know where you're going down that pathway. So by finding our purpose and setting our intention, even though obstacles will come and the resilience will appear uh, just automatically on how well we will navigate where we're going. 
And the last skill is to practice our skills. Life is a practice, so we must enjoy the process. Resilience may take time to build, so don't get discouraged. If you still struggle to cope with a problematic event, don't worry about it. It's okay. Everyone can learn to be resilient and it doesn't involve any specific set of behaviors or actions. Many people try to teach, uh, whether it be leadership or resilience based on an external skill set. We really have to work internally and develop our internal skill set. Resilience can vary dramatically from one person to the next. We must focus on practicing these skills as well as the common characteristic of resilient people. So we also want to remember building on our existing strengths. If we focus our strength and focus on our strength, that will override all the weaknesses that we may in, in have. So let's focus on our strengths. Well, this brings me to the end of this episode. And if you'd like to be notified weekly for our new podcast, please subscribe. And the Susan Taylor podcast does come out weekly. And it's available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and TuneIn. Also on SusanTaylor.org, where you can click on the podcast to subscribe. Again, I'd like to say thank you for listening. And the Susan Taylor podcast comes out every week. So any questions or comments, please send them in. And I'll be glad to look at them and then acknowledge them in our next podcast. Until next time, remain calm.